day on Day One Outdoors. We return to Salani Surf Resort in Western Samoa in search of billfish aboard the Leilani with Captain Chris Donato. Our first days on the island brought several inshore species of fish and the first blue marlin on the trip. Join us as we continue to develop a pattern offshore. There you go, he might jump. Here you go, get ready. In search of billfish, this untapped fishery. Right now on Day One Outdoors. Coming at us. Oh, look how purple he is. He's a nice color. All right, ready? All right, we'll go catch him. Showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that ran. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. Our second day chasing billfish in Samoa. The currents continue to push bait fish offshore and we're faced with difficult conditions once again. Our captain will have to work hard today to put us on fish, but it's a beautiful day in the South Pacific and our hopes are high. First thing I do when I get up in the morning, um, if I have time, I'll get on the internet first thing, check the, check the charts to see what the current doing. Current to me is probably the most important thing here. Um, and then when I get out here on the water, I'm gonna look at my speed over ground, I'm gonna determine what the, what the current's doing and see, if, see where it's doing, how fast it's going, what's going on with that. If it's calm out, which it generally is, it's really easy to tell right away where that current's going. If it's rough, it's a little bit more difficult, but um, that's what I want to find because the current's really going to tell you where you want to spend your day, you know, what edges you want to work, what side of the edges you want to work, where the upwelling's going to be. Um, the next most important thing is you want to know, you want to know kind of when your tides are going to be. Um, at least for this fishery, I find the bites are pretty close to the tide changes, usually right around coming into the high after the high, coming into the low after the low. Um, so a lot of times you'll mark a fish and you know, I'll drive over him and drive over him and he's there and you just won't do anything and then all of a sudden you get a tide change um, and all of a sudden he eats. So it definitely, definitely makes a difference. Um, so that's the next thing I'm gonna look at. You know, all this is sort of determining maybe not 100% where I'm gonna fish the whole day but it gives me an idea of where I'm gonna start looking. Then I start looking in those areas uh, and when I find a spot that is good, Generally, I want to be there when that tide change is happening. So, you know, I'll try and spend the rest of the day looking around, looking for things. If I find a really productive spot, birds, tuna busting, I'll stay there. Um, if I find something else that looks like it marks down deeper, looks like it'll be good later, I'll mark it. I'll keep looking around and I'll come back and then I'll work that spot like crazy until I get my bite. We continued to pound the same stretch of water for hours, 
Chris had found structure and marked a few fish with no action. But the afternoon tide was about to switch. He was just following that thing. It's returning. It finally eats it. It's a nice sail. He wants to get in the wheels. He doesn't like life. bigger than that marlin the other day. back out we just landed that sailfish and man it's been a struggle so far today it's 4 30 in the afternoon we've been fishing since before eight haven't raised a fish didn't see anything on the graph but we had that sail come up on the left long he came up looked at it swirled on it but didn't eat so chris made a good hard turn to starboard got the bullet and the shotgun going a lot faster made that fight or flight reaction happen and we had some success and again it's been tough the currents are wrong the temperature's wrong everything's working against us but we still found a way to put a fish to the boat. Awesome. Great tag release. Samoa's beauty goes beyond billfish. We headed in to enjoy the evening and rest up. challenges, but we were confident our pattern would pay off. Time to get the gear in.
just landed his second blue marlin of the trip, man, and what a crazy bite that was. Absolutely nuts. We're in the middle of talking about what we're going to do if we got our first bite of the day. And man, it just happened right in the middle of your sense. The date just left short, and it was an insane bite. Chris, our captain, he said that a fish came in hard from the starboard side, came in on the left short, smacked it, was already going to cartwheel before we even knew what was going on. How was the fight? Hey man, all I know is we're talking, I hear a slap, that was the downrigger coming off, the outrigger coming off, and I saw the drag start going, and it was great. And we were doing cartwheels back here, just uh, jugging along, and we picked up the rod, and I got back in the seat, you guys started to turn all the cameras on, just went after Yeah, it was, it was nuts. The fish fought hard, it was out of the water half the time yep. during the fight, yep. and he just wore himself out. You got him alongside the back of the boat. Well, I guess right behind the boat, he started working it pretty hard, didn't he? Yeah, he went down. He went down, and I started working on him a little bit, and we're pulling a little bit. He pulled a little bit of drag, but I guess he wore himself out pretty quick. You know? Yeah. So he might have been, what, 130 pounds? Yeah, yeah, Maybe right right there. Bigger than your first one, but man, what a great start. But one thing that Chris said, any time that there are the small blues around, the big blues are there too. And the reason behind that is that this is actually a spawning area for these blues. So you find the smaller males here, the 100 to 250 pounders, and they're gonna be near the bigger ones, the 500 to 1,000 plus pounders. Right. And the Chris, uh, the triple that Chris had last week, two of them were rats, one was a 600 pounder. Oof. So we know that there's a big one around. Okay. But we're just gonna keep on trolling here. It's a great way to start the morning. We're not even an hour in. No, we were probably 20 minutes maybe. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, really, I'm, really, I'm excited. I'm ready to get some more, man. Yep, we already so got early. the lines in. Let's go. Yep. All right, see if that left shore gets deep again. <laughs> That, that sail wore me out. And I'll tell you what, we were just off top, about ready to talk to Captain Chris about what he was doing and why he was going back over the same mark. And he was just pointing out the exact same mark where Brandon caught his blue, what, 15 minutes earlier? Yeah. And man, we hooked up again, and it was a beautiful sail. Fought it hard, just jumping all over the place. And then right next to the boat, what, what happened? happened? We had another little sail come up, maybe about a 40, 50 pounder, yeah. right behind him. And yeah. we, we didn't have enough time to drop another skirt in to bring him back up. Uh, we were so you know, trying to deal with this other sail. Oh, it was, it was incredible. We're over here getting some shots, getting ready to release that sail. And then Chris goes, hey, there's another sail, another sail. We look right behind him, and there he was. He's just spinning right behind him. We dropped one of the shorts in. I think that lure is just too big for that sail. It was, like you said, it was a smaller one. But we're on some fish. It's been slow, yeah. but man, we found some. Hey, we're on it's it. It's our third day out here. We finally got a few fish around. I think the currents are working in our favor now. Yep. Uh, we got a blue, also. got a sail, saw the other sail. See a swirl right there. Um, that could be some bait. Yeah, you see that right there? Yeah, we're seeing some pilot whales around here. That's what we saw swirling. Man, we're on the spot. Chris keeps on making turns on this little honey hole that he's found. Yep. Again, we're only an hour, hour and a half into the day, and man, we were we were pretty down. Yeah. yeah. It was a little uh, frustrating. Yeah. Travel this far. It's fishing. Though. It's fishing. It is. And I don't even know if the currents changed, but maybe we just finally found some fish. Well, it, we've been in the same spot the first two days, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's just, there's something that's happened. Something with the boom, the phasing, the current, or something. Maybe the wind direction now has changed a little bit. Maybe that's helped bring the fish in or bring the bait over. 
Well, just like we talked about and what happens with us salmon fishing all the time, all it takes is one tide change. Oh, yeah. One tide change and everything can switch. Yep. And for us, it did today. Just can't give up. Yep. A lot of ocean out here, a lot of fish. You just got to be on top. Well, and so far, Chris has put us on them. So let's get back to it here. I need to rest up. My arms a little tired. I'm not used to this kind of fishing. Get some water in me. See if we can't stick another one. I got a pink blue now. Let's do it again. All right, buddy. Let's do it, man. Basically, we start off this morning. Uh, we know the, the current's been kind of pushing off. So, um, so it seems like the bait's sitting a little bit wider out here. Um, yesterday, I noticed this spot was, was actually stacking up the bait around the tide change as we were kind of heading back. So I really wanted to focus on here um, and see what we could find. We got a sail here yesterday and seeing some stuff around. So, uh, so I pretty much came straight out and went right here. Um, you know, we went over the spot I wanted to go over. We got, we got a bite, we had a blue on, we caught him. Um, so what I do, what I always do is I get a good fish on, um, I put a mark, a little waypoint, and I'm always running a track on my GPS so I can see where I've been. And then uh, basically what I did, as soon as you release that fish, got everything set back out, I turned and we went right back over the same spot. And literally like right on it, within 100 yards of that spot, boom, we got one on the shotgun and that was that big sailfish. Um, so they're obviously in here, the bait must be, you know, they must be all jammed up in here feeding. Um, when we were re releasing that sail, we saw another one. So there, there's definitely fish in here. So, you know, my plan for the next few hours will definitely be to hit this spot pretty hard. Um, and that's generally what I try to do. If I find a place that's productive, I don't usually leave it. I'll, I'll, I'll sit here. Um, even if the bite slows down, it usually it will pick up again later in the day. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Marlin fishing has become a predominantly catch and release sport in an effort to better understand these pelagic fish. We took a moment to speak with Captain Donato regarding the global taking efforts. Most of the fish that we, that we catch, we usually tag them and release them. So there's two sorts of tags that we we'll use. We'll either use the, uh, the regular sort of um, spaghetti string tags, which are what you, what you saw us tagging them with on this show, the orange ones from the Billfish Foundation. Those tags don't have any sort of uh, electric chips or anything like that in there. Um, they just have um, a number on it and they have a mailing address. So basically if someone were to catch one of those fish, so it's like a, um, if it's a commercial guy or another recreational angler, anybody were to find that fish, it says on the tag to take it off and they're supposed to take it off, um, measure the fish, weigh it, well not, not really weigh it, but measure it and then um, you send the tag back um, and they kind of will track what these fish are doing. You know, marlin for the most part, their migrations are widely, like they don't really know 100% what they're doing. It's all kind of being learned. Um, and so some of the other tags that we've been using too are um, satellite pop-up tags, which will actually stay on the fish um, for anywhere between six to 12 months. And, um, those things, what they'll do is they'll track speed, depth, um, and where they went, GPS coordinates and everything. And what will happen is eventually they'll come off the fish, float to the surface, and send all the data. We tagged a couple of those. Um, we put a couple of those on some fish here, and they all came back uh, after six months and had some really cool information on where the fish went and what they've been doing. And a, and a really cool thing that's been coming back from these pop-up tags as well is that about 90% of all tagged fish survive. So that right there shows that, you know, the, the whole 
releasing fish and putting tags in them and everything that they are surviving, that they that they do go on and live. So the main thing is just um, to try and learn about these fish. It's it's all um, it's all sort of new, you know. That they're they're just always gathering information. So so that's what we're kind of trying to help with if, if we can. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. chasing a lot of schools of yellowfin around right now. We're off a ledge and this is the first day that these yellowfin have shown up off this ledge according to Chris. He hasn't seen them all season. They're over a month late and we are surrounded by them. They're boiling all around us. We're chasing flocks of bird from one to the next. There's big schools crashing all over behind us here. We're gonna keep trolling around them, troll through them. We got a couple longs out there with smaller lures. Gonna see if uh, we can't get them to go. But so far, we're on about eight or nine school of yellowfin. No luck yet. Chris kept on trolling us along the shoreline out to a really deep edge. 
and we came out here, really didn't see much, but we found a pot of birds, and underneath the birds were, we, had, we saw a lot of big elephant tuna. Big. I mean, big. We're talking 50 to 150 pounders, just porpoise and all over the place, blowing up on bait. Uh, we made a couple, what, maybe six loops around them, yeah. and we found another school of them. Came up to this other school, and we saw even bigger fish, I think, and uh, we actually made a really nice big turn. We let our shotgun way out the back, and as we made the turn, our uh, shotgun was actually bringing some fish in. These fish are coming out of the uh, school right over into our spread, and you know, it didn't take, but yep. only five minutes later, boom, shotgun went off and we hooked into a sailfish. <laughs> Man, we all thought it was gonna be a yellowfin at first since we've been around yellowfin all day, haven't raised a single billfish, but it loaded up that shotgun, the band snapped, went off, and it was your first sailfish, right? Yeah, my first sailfish. So I mean, I've got marlin now, and first sail, now I want to get a big elephant. I know, man. Well, they're definitely here. There's bird piles everywhere. And that sail you got was all colored up. He had the sail up. It's just beautiful, about 75 pounds. Yep. It's awesome, man. Yep. Well, able, we're able to get a nice uh, tag in it, so that's great. Yeah. yeah, I got the tag in it. Well, there's still tons of yellowfin right out here. I can see birds working, so we're going to keep on working the school yellowfin. Hopefully get a nice 100, 150 pound ahi. We'll see. But Chris did mention one thing. When he caught his brander here a couple years ago, he was going from school to school of yellowfin because in between schools, his right short went off and he got that grander. Oh. So when there's big yellowfin around, there's also big blue marlin. So we got a good chance of finding a big blue today. All right. Just keep on plugging away. See what we can do, man. Yep. We're, we're bringing a knife to a gunfight. What we're doing right now. The Ahi would not bite our troll gear. Brandon grabbed lighter tackle in an effort to hook up. Our final day here in Samoa was coming to a close. With all that was working against us, each day we landed billfish and had a trip of a lifetime. Western Samoa is an angler's dream with no pressure and countless species of both inshore and offshore fish. We were blessed to experience the beauty of the island, its people, and the incredible fishing. A return trip to Solani can't come soon enough.